Hello and welcome to another segment of interviews that matter. I'm your host Raj Mehta. Friends, in this segment we bring those guests who influence our lives. This includes elected officials, policy makers, heads of major organizations and other dignitaries. It is my sincere hope that the knowledge brought in by this guest will help our community. Today's segment is divided into two parts. In part 1, we will have our guest Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano. The county executive will give us the eyewitness account of aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. And in part 2, we will have Ashwin Subramanian who lost everything in the hurricane. Let's meet County Executive Ed Mangano. Thank you so much for coming here, sir. Again, pleasure to be here, Ron. It's really nice of you to come again. Oh, you know, my pleasure. Um, you know, I want, today's uh, topic is obviously Hurricane Sandy and efforts of you know helping victims of uh, Hurricane Sandy. So you were on the ground from day one. Tell us something. What did you see out there? How you know how everything is going? Well, as you know, we began preparing for the storm on the reports about 120 hours before the storm hits. Okay. That's really a testament to our emergency management preparedness. In mm -hmm. Nassau County, we work on our plans mm -hmm. and rework our plans constantly. Mm -hmm. So, at 120 hours out, the real work begins mm -hmm. because you need mm -hmm. to anticipate what's happening. Mm -hmm. You need to make sure that you have your assets in place, that your cars are fuel, that your mm -hmm. police are in mm -hmm. position, that your public works officials are in position, your emergency management, and most importantly, you file track the weather and at uh, about 48 hours 50 hours before we declared uh, a mandatory evacuation mm -hmm. the mandatory evacuation allows us to move our most frail residents out of the affected area because that takes some time for instance you evacuate a hospital mm -hmm. we evacuated seven nursing homes wow. all of those residents mm -hmm. need to be moved to another like facility on higher ground so you can imagine the time and effort and the ambulances involved mm -hmm. so that's uh, a lot of the planning that shines through the through the event and then of course we always hope for the best mm. and prepare for the worst right we prepared for the worst and unfortunately the worst hit us this time mm. and it mm. is devastating you mm. know it was very very sad very emotional time as you saw uh, people's homes being destroyed their personal mm. possessions floating in the street you know wedding albums and baby albums it was really a very very uh, emotional sad time Mm. But it is a time when you have to stay focused, you have to be a leader, mm. and you have to make certain that we can first and foremost mm. save lives. And that's right. the first thing that you do. You start with life-saving efforts and uh, a testament again to our volunteer firefighters, our police officers, emergency management personnel, fire marshal, uh, doctors and nurses that work so very hard mm -hmm. to minimize the loss of life. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, they did a great job. because at the end of the day when you step back from this catastrophic storm mm -hmm. and you compare it to other points of the region a mm -hmm. storm of this size is usually measured by the amount of life loss mm -hmm. and here in Nassau County we have such a minimum loss of life due to the efforts mm -hmm. of those very professionals a testament to how many lives were saved and that's the initial Mm -hmm. uh response and then of mm -hmm. course you need to begin clearing roads as you know we had an extreme uh, hardship our utility had with pr uh, providing accurate information and providing mm -hmm. electricity mm -hmm. so you have people displaced you have no heat no electric the gas is turned mm -hmm. off uh we had roadways that were uh, blocked we had roadways that collapsed we had mm -hmm. bridges that failed mm -hmm. we had critical infrastructure that mm -hmm. that that failed due to the you know sheer volume of salt water infiltration that uh mm -hmm. one never would have expected to uh, hit this uh, great county to that degree but mm -hmm. it did you know we we do pay tribute to those that have uh studied and prepared for what many talked about was the 100 year storm we used to always talk about this 100 year storm mm -hmm. well in fact uh, mm -hmm. hurricane sandy really was the hurricane storm that hurt us Mm. 1938 was the last worst like this hurricane you know like hurricane Yeah Sandy. a little bit before my time so I don't have any <laughs> personal knowledge of that other than the history books but it mm. showed so mm. you know that was severe devastation mm. at the time so it's just in this uh day and age where where we have a very dense population mm. we have a extremely uh dense developed shoreline mm -hmm. uh and over the years infrastructure were put in places where if you knew today you wouldn't put it you know such as some hospitals and mm. nursing mm -hmm. facilities and some public safety facilities were really in harm's way and our 
remain in harm's way, and we're need now we're taking a look at uh, moving from mm -hmm. we move from the life saving. Then we look to the short term mm -hmm. recovery, and now we're working on our long term recovery plans, which obviously includes looking at where these infrastructures are placed, how to harden them or raise them, or you know, and this this is a significant amount of planning and study that's going on right now to get our county to be back where it was, but to be better and stronger. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, the county is also working with FEMA and uh, other agencies like SBA and FEMA. Yeah, very, very uh, important, and we launched it from uh, the first hour mm -hmm. before at the 120-hour uh, point where we, mm -hmm. uh, where the meteorologist was forecasting the storm surge. We formed a great alliance with uh, Governor Cuomo and the state team and uh, mm -hmm. the federal government mm -hmm. and FEMA. Mm -hmm. And everything that we did as we moved forward, we kept our communication up and worked as teams on the individual issues, which basically helped speed uh, the bureaucratic process that sometimes gets in the way of delivering uh, uh, aid. Right, right, yeah. Uh, so they are very cooperative with the county and... They are know, co they cooperating very well. Uh, you know, the weakness that some of our residents are, are experiencing and the hardships our businesses are experiencing mm -hmm. is the fact that the existing programs really don't provide the level of relief that's necessary mm -hmm. here in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Many of these programs were designed mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. uh, for regions, uh, you know, south and west of us where, quite frankly, the cost of living is less, the uh, mm -hmm. alternate housing uh, stock is more, the open space mm -hmm. is plentiful. And uh, it is mm -hmm. basically cheaper to do a restoration effort. Here it's much more expensive, the high cost of living, mm -hmm. the high cost of materials, mm -hmm. and the absolute shortage in mm -hmm. rental stock to help mm -hmm. displaced residents mm -hmm. really create a strain on the existing programs which are, for the Northeast, quite frankly, underfunded. And mm -hmm. that's why we have been very strongly advocating for Congress to come together to provide the funds necessary here so our residents can recover. You know, our nation is a mm -hmm. strong nation because mm -hmm. we do not allow mm -hmm. any one mm -hmm. part of our nation to collapse or mm -hmm. fail. Uh, what we do is in the event of a natural disaster, we come to the aid of that region. It's part of our rich history. Mm -hmm. This happens, um, unfortunately, regularly due to, due to the weather. And the Northeast just can't be an exception. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we fought for it not to be an exception. We fought for it to be counted. Mm -hmm. uh, for the government uh, to stand up and do the right thing here. The fact of the matter is our taxpayers send uh, money to Washington year after year after year yeah, after yeah, year right. and uh, help many other parts of the country. Yeah. As a matter of fact, help many other countries itself. Mm -hmm. And now we have residents in need, real need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we expect it to be addressed. Uh, we're happy that Congress finally came together and passed the supplemental appropriation. And now we're at this point uh, in your interview, we're waiting for the Senate to act and then the President to sign it into law, which is all expected to happen. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, more work occurs because the fact of the matter is once you understand the funding on the federal level, then we need to understand how the feds are going to divide up that money, what do the programs look like, and how does it get to, to the, right the person in need. Exactly. You so know, as quickly as takes? possible. I mean, that takes a long time, right? That takes a long time because, you know, we are in 80 days here and they just passed the, the right. supplemental right. and it's right. not actually fully passed yet. Right. And the other agencies in the federal government really can't, um, uh, they will not provide the programming hmm. until hmm. they know that they have the money. They work on them, and we've worked, and we've expressed mm -hmm. the need, and we've asked for changes in the programs, mm -hmm. uh, but they reserve their comment until after the, the bill is signed. So we're waiting eagerly to see uh, that bill pass the Senate, get signed into law, and these programs come down. I believe part of the requirement, which will be a good requirement, mm -hmm. is that part of this money will have to be uh, spent, in other words, reach uh, those in need within 60 days. So that's where we're hoping to focus in on that part of the bill hmm. uh, and uh, we're, we're working again with the state and federal government to see what that looks like when it's finally in its final form passes and moves on and uh, we meet regularly with the with the teams from the state and federal government yesterday mm -hmm. we spent a good five hours 
you know, meeting on this subject mm -hmm. uh, with other municipal leaders, understanding mm -hmm. needs in the mm -hmm. affected area. We met with the supervisors of the two mm -hmm. towns that were affected. We met with the uh, uh, city of Long Beach. We met with the uh, Freeport uh, Village and uh, town of Hempstead, town of Oyster Bay to get an update on uh, where they are with their needs <coughs> so we can make sure we can strongly advocate and get a good understanding. So the communication is a key part, I guess. You know, communication. I mean, that's <coughs> communication is is a key part. Most of the federal officials that I dealt with on this on this matter right. have said this has been a shining example of people working together. Wow. You know, okay. in other parts of the country, it hasn't gone as well mm -hmm. because people tend to fight. Here, we truly work together for the betterment of our, of our citizens. Uh, and uh, that's that's very helpful. It's a great base, mm -hmm. but again, mm -hmm. you know, people in need want to see yeah. the dollars yeah. and the yeah. assistance reach them. So there's a frustration level, right. which I certainly understand. I've you know experienced mm -hmm. it myself. Mm -hmm. The frustration of getting these things kick started, mm -hmm. and uh, we're advocating strongly. And again, as you know, Raj, it's it's very important that uh, the final documents be signed and put in place so this aid can can flow but this is separate from fema funds some of the funds may go to fema some See, of the we're not we're go. not clear exactly how mm -hmm. the federal government will allot the funds that are passed okay. we believe and and it's anticipated some of the dollars will go to the f existing fema programming mm -hmm. and some of those programs may be adjusted to take into account the cost of living here in the northeast mm -hmm. a significant amount of the dollars will go to the secretary of hud okay. and good news there it's Sean donovan who's a new yorker Okay. Understands the region. I had the opportunity to meet with him several times. I met with his team yesterday. Mm -hmm. And they they have a great understanding of the problems that we're facing here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we expect and uh, that they will get a good chunk of the money and, and then have control of the programming. Mm -hmm. And that would be good news for us if you have someone that understands mm -hmm. the need mm -hmm. that's control of the programming. Uh, our mm -hmm. assumption is that it'll move quicker to the to the residents in that manner. Mm. And also they are talking about the new lines to be drawn so that you don't be too close to the ocean or you, in, in case something yeah, like this had happened. Part, of this, you know, right, like part of this is to be smart and right. take a close look on the rebuilding effort on how to either raise those homes right. so they would be better protected against soft water infiltration mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. in the alternative, you know, w raise some of the infrastructure, the electric in the homes. There's things that can be done that mm -hmm. certainly will minimize damage mm -hmm. should uh, mm -hmm. salt water uh, infiltration come again. And then there's certain areas that may possibly not be rebuilt at all because right. they can't be protected exactly. at all. And uh, part of these dollars is expected to fund mm -hmm. a buyback program, mm -hmm. which again, you know, will have, uh, uh, you know, many requirements to fulfill mm -hmm. in order to qualify. And mm -hmm. uh, again, we'll look to the uh, federal government and to partner with them and the state to get an understanding of mm -hmm. what properties will qualify, how do they qualify, what happens to the land, what will we do with the land, what happens to the tax base, what happens to the economy mm -hmm. and the support in the individual communities. There's a lot to, a lot to think about and plan. It's very complex. Every right. topic is very complex and very deep as you, as you move forward. Mm -hmm. Really appreciate it. My Thank pleasure. You so Thank you. Time. Appreciate it. Welcome back to Interviews That Matter. I'm your host Raj Mehta. In this part, we will speak with Ashwin Subramaniam who lost everything in Hurricane Sandy. Let's hear his story. Ashwin, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Thanks for having me. Um, Ashwin, you know, before we get into your, you know, um, devastating effect of Sandy on your apartment and everything else, uh, first I would like to know actually, uh, I would like our viewers to know who you are. So tell us your background, what do you do, what your, you know, how did you get into this? Sure, basically I'm, a, uh, I'm an Indian American composer and um, what I do is I compose for films and albums. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of my work revolves around composing either for uh, film projects, so you're, you have your usual Bollywood type of stuff, mm -hmm. or you have um, composing for devotional albums, which has been a new area that I've been getting into. Mm -hmm. And devotional albums in the sense that it's more tailored towards the youth. So trying to present 
you know, all these traditional bhajans of Mirabai Surdas and uh, these type of poets in, in a way that's more appealing to the younger generation. Okay. Um, so that's been a major project for me uh, in recent months. Um, and apart from that, I work with a lot of American artists and try to bring Indian influences into their music. Mm -hmm. And so these are sort of the three things that mainly my work revolves around. Okay, so mostly like you are into music basically. Into music. Music, singing. Singing, and I do a lot of live shows. So basically between mm -hmm. singing and um, composing. So what is your educational background? Educational background is, um, I did my undergrad in, um, in computer engineering. Oh. So a very traditional sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, vocation there. But uh, all through my life, you know, everybody in my family is a musician, oh. is into Carnatic music. Okay. So that's always been part of my life ever since I was little. Um, so recently what I did was I went to India for three years and I studied under A.R. Rahman. Oh, and okay. um, he has a school in Chennai called the KM Music Conservatory. Okay. And so I was able to get admission there. I studied under him and I worked in his studio on a number of Hindi film projects like um, Ravan, Ada, Delhi Six. So I helped out on arranging the background and the, uh, the songs, the soundtrack of the entire film. And so that's sort of what I've been doing in India for the past uh, few years. And uh, I also work with a lot of directors that are doing my own uh, composing mm -hmm. projects. So this is sort of where I've been coming from the past few years. Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So, you know, let's say, for example, if you are, you know, part of the whole musical team for movie Ravan. Sure. How does it go? Like, for example, how many people is involved in that? I mean, a lot of people involved? In There's that? quite a lot of people. So yeah. typically the way it works when composing okay. for films is um, you have like a main composer right. and he's the one that, that decides what the vision will be the musical vision for the movie. Okay. So he'll consult with the director and he'll say, okay, this is what I want. Okay. And underneath him will be a lot of assistants who orchestrate the right. score. Mm -hmm. Because when you're talking about a film, the deadlines are very tight. Okay. So if he were to sit and do all the work himself, we wouldn't finish it in time. Mm -hmm. So that's when people like me and other assistants in the studio come in. Mm -hmm. So he'll lay out the rough idea and it'll be quite developed. And then we'll go in and we'll add certain instruments. He'll give us direction. Mm -hmm. He'll say, you know, I want trumpets to be added here or I want this voice, I want you to process it a little bit differently. So these type of specific instructions will be given to multiple people. Mm -hmm. And someone like AR, he has a team of like six, seven people working. Okay. So including people who help him with the actual arranging, as well as people who do the sound mixing and things like that. And not to mention the musicians, he has a, um, he has a 60 piece string section. Ah. So you have like violinists, you have celloists, and you have all this, you have the entire Western orchestra also. Right. And that's, they, they, they of course provide like the grand, the grandeur of the background scores. So in a typical film soundtrack, there's like, there's easily over a hundred people involved. If you look at musicians, plus technicians, um, you know, plus singers. So how did you get involved in devotional music? Devotional, um, I never intended to get involved in it. Uh, what happened was, uh, after I had completed my education at um, KM, um, one day my father suggested to me, he said, you should do an album which is an offering and before starting your career. That should be the way that you start, is you should do it, you should do something and dedicate it to God, and then after that you should start oh, okay. your career. Okay. And so that's when I did an album by the name of Arkhya. Okay. And Arkhya was the first time that I had ever done devotional music, and it was where I started playing with this idea of taking all these devotional songs mm -hmm. and then doing it in a totally modern way, mm -hmm. uh, while still retaining uh, the cultural aspects of it, the language behind it, and make sure you, you're true to all those things. Mm -hmm. So what happened was that uh, that ended up becoming very popular, mm -hmm. and that's how I got involved with uh, Chinmaya Mission, and uh, specifically uh, Chinmaya Yivakendra Chik. Mm -hmm. And so I've been doing a lot of musical projects, collaborations with mm -hmm. them, presenting devotional music in this type of modern way. So now let's move into, um, you know, like we had a terrible storm, couple of storms actually one after the other mm -hmm. in our area. And that was kind of the worst storm in the century. You know, the last storm, this worst was in 1938. Absolutely. And after that, this was like, you know, it, it happened at night. So many people didn't even realize it. Yeah, yeah, so, um, you had a big loss uh, from the storm. That's uh, right. Tell us about something about that. You know, like you, where do you live now? Brooklyn? So my uh, my studio and home is in Brooklyn, okay. and it's in Sheepshead Bay, so very close to Coney Island. Um, okay. So I had my full studio set up there, okay. and um, during Sandy, what happened was I was in one of the evacuation zones, so you know I had to leave, but. Um, my whole studio set up and my apartment got flooded with about seven feet of water. Oh. So, um, so yeah, so literally there was four inches between the water and the ceiling. 
Oh. So that's it. And um, all my studio equipment, unfortunately, ended up getting damaged in that process. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm in the process of rebuilding everything from scratch now. Oh boy. Boy. So, so when did you find out? I mean, you were already evacuated, right? At that time, you were not there. I was not there. I mean, I found out like, um, you know, the following day. The following day. Um, in fact, two days because it took that much time for the water to recede. Oh, okay. You know, so by the time all the water went and um, and uh, people went and checked out how the destruction was, mm -hmm. that's when I found out that okay, you know, everything's been damaged, mm -hmm. and you basically have to start from scratch. Boy, oh boy. So that that's was. So so how many in. instruments you had? I mean, not too, too many. I, I had, um, yeah, like a number of instruments, like guitars, keyboards, and um, a lot of electronics. You know, like all the studio equipment is very expensive, and I think that was the main cost. Wow. There, um, you know, mics, recording equipment, and things like that. So did you um, go to like insurance, FEMA, or something like that? Yeah. Um, and in fact, the thing is, FEMA, the problem with FEMA is, I mean, they, they provide, of course, for house and uh, for clothing and for, you know, for the uh, essentials like that. But um, musicians have like a problem because we're all self-employed. We do our own projects. So they don't cover our tools for work okay. and our studio gear. So that's sort of one place where artists have been struggling. Um, you know, luckily the community is trying to help out. And so because of that, you know, I've been seeing a lot of support and uh, definitely a lot of credit goes to friends and family and uh, you know the, the Chin Mission of course who, who have all been step stepping in and who have who have been helping mm -hmm. and that's really been great to see the type of support so right now you're like kind of you know raising funds for, so that you can again come back up absolutely right? so We're how do if somebody uh, if someone, someone wants to contribute how do they do that sure um, we've set up a donation website and uh, that's the easiest way that people can uh, go about it. Um, the website address is um, www.indiegogo.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-G-O-G-O -G -O dot com slash A-K-S dash studio dash fund. That's Ox Studio Fund. And, and AKS uh, stands for Ashwin Subramanian. Ashwin Krishna Subramanian, yeah. Krishna Subramanian. Right? Yeah. The studio uh, uh, fund. Ag Ox fund. Studio Fund, yeah. Ox hyphen studio hyphen fund. Okay, so if anyone uh, wants to help, you know, you can certainly go on the website. Website is already listed on your screen. Uh, so um, I, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping that you come up very fast on this and so come back again because you know, music is life here, and uh, you know, it's very important. Like you know, people like you have to come back up again. <laughs> and I guess you know you. Uh, you have your degree in IT, but mm -hmm. obviously IT is your secondary. Absolutely. Uh, then, you know, <laughs> primary is music, and right. you know we not many people like you. We, we don't have too many people like you. So mm -hmm. we want to have you, and we want to really make sure that you get up again uh, into your fit, and again oh, give us you. beautiful music, beautiful albums in the future. Thank you so You're a young man. You have a huge, you know, long life ahead ahead <laughs> of you, and so we want to wish you uh, lots of luck on that. Thank you so much. And uh, any help that we can provide, please. Uh, do not hesitate to you know let us know. Thank you so much. Uh, Appreciate that. Yep. Anything you want to say to the viewers? Sir? Um, I I would really sincerely like to thank everybody who's contributed so far. Um, I'm just seeing the type of support that the community has has given has, has really been humbling. Mm -hmm. um, and I if anything else, as an artist, it it makes us think: How can we keep doing better? How can we keep pushing the envelope? Mm -hmm. And um, you know, how can we keep giving people something that will truly uplift them and uh, help others overcome similar challenges. Mm -hmm. And so that's really been what's going through my mind. And so uh, in, that, in that vein, I'd like to really extend a sincere thank you to everybody who's contributed, um, to all my friends, family, to my Chinmaya Mission family. Um, and um, thanks in advance to everyone who will contribute. I really appreciate it. Yeah, well, that's the name of life. I mean, you know, basically we help each other. We are a small community here and uh, we must help each other. And that's how it works, basically, you know, a uh, person who needs uh, anything, obviously, you know, if you're not the, I'm sure that there are a lot of other community members also may be affected by <laughs> this. Uh, so, uh, but we definitely want to see what we can do for each one of you. Absolutely. Okay? So thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's yeah, been a pleasure. We'll definitely appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And lots of luck. Thank you.